Hey everyone, it's Jan Zhao back again. And I just wanted to make a quick video about something that happened on Ethan Van Skyver's stream last night. So I had sent him a super chat asking him, basically I, I wanted to know what his thoughts were on how comics are sort of going to proceed in the future and what would be the distribution method and his answer was that through social media, you would be able to connect with more people who would buy your books. And, you know, that's the way forward because bookstores are becoming more and more relevant. And the mains, too, um, you know, they're producing pretty much garbage. So that was his thought on how you proceed forward, um, which... Kind of answered my question, but not exactly. What I was trying to get at more is how do we make the pie larger, not get a larger slice of the pie? And what I mean by that is, uh, Ethan is 100% right that making a YouTube channel, having a presence on Twitter, maybe Instagram, getting to know people in the community, really getting in touch with and getting to know your customers, your readers better. That's the way to go in the future. But the problem for me is this, is that I see comics fandom shrinking as a whole. And yeah, there's plenty of room for growth for people in indies, especially if you have a good product. Uh, if Comicsgate has proven nothing else, it's that there is a huge demand for good quality books things that people want to read, good art, not this nonsense, simple line drawing like you would see in a squirrel girl, and deep stories, back like we had in the old days of the 80s. But I'm kind of wondering if the 80s were already sort of a downward trend. And so to, anal to make an analogy, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about baseball. So in, I think it was 93, if you uh, were a fan of Cleveland Indians baseball, you could go to the stadium. There were about 71, 73,000 seats. So there are always seats available. Bleacher seats cost basically $4 per ticket. So what would happen is you could have a family of four go for $16, and then you get some snacks there. At that rate, people were able to take their families to multiple games every month. People in Cleveland were known as some of the best diehard sports fans there were. So in 94, they built a new stadium. Now, instead of 72,000, you had about 45,000 seats, which meant those bleacher seats went up. Now I think they're about $25 a piece. So if you have a family of four, that's $100. That's a hell of a lot more expensive than it was before. And what you see is if you're in the upper middle class, maybe you're going to go once a month. For people who aren't, maybe for your birthday. And that's about it. Around the same time, they took the baseball games off of over-the-air broadcast stations and instead they put it on cable networks. So it wasn't even a basal, basic cable network. You had to get a certain level to have that sports channel. So now what you end up doing is cutting the legs out of the industry to where you're breaking that emotional bond that a family would share, that I would pass it on to my kids, my kids would pass it on to their kids. A lot of it's because you couldn't afford to go in person and you couldn't watch it on TV anymore. So it's kind of an out of sight, out of mind thing. And this isn't just the story of Cleveland. This is baseball in general. And so what you saw was when they had these stadiums, the 90s were quite a good time for baseball. But now it's sucking wind. Attendance is down. Viewership is down. And in my opinion, it's because 
we've really broken the connection. So my question is, why is comics any different? What you had uh, when I was younger in the 80s, you would get comics everywhere. There were comic book stores where you could go to get back issues. You could go to get specialized things. It was a high point for indies. They even had adult, meaning dirty, X-rated comics. And it was good. But the mainstay of comics were the spinner racks. You could go to any 7-Eleven. You could go to any grocery store, any gas station, and you could get a comic. They had all the normal superhero comics, but you'd also find stuff for younger kids. I remember the first comic somebody gave me, I guess you could call it a graphic novel. It was either Donald Duck or Scrooge McDuck. And I had this when I was like six, seven, and then slowly graduated on to other titles like Transformers, G.I. Joe, and to eventually into more superhero comics. So how do we, as an industry, increase the pie? How do we get back to a time when it was accepted for people to just go grab a comic, to read a comic? And yeah, it was definitely more accepted for kids rather than adults. But if you don't get people as kids, how many people as an adult are going to buy a graphic novel? You know, it's hard to have a conversation like this, uh, especially with someone like Ethan. You know, the guy just sold a million dollars in books, and I respect his opinion, and he's not wrong in the things that he said, but I think it's missing a larger point. And the other question to me is manga, because it, manga is eating American comics books lunch. So what happened? I think it goes back to an earlier problem where you had different kinds of books. You had Westerns and sci-fi and horror and romance before the 70s. And in the 70s, it all sort of coalesced and all the great talent in the U.S. went into superheroes. So what can we learn from the Japanese? Well, I lived in Japan for about three years and I was teaching some design classes there and doing marketing as well. And one of the things you notice is that in Japan, everybody reads comics. It's not weird. You see people on the train, you see people in a Wendy's or McDonald's or a little cafe or on the bus or anywhere reading manga. Why? I think part of it has to do with their freedom to tell stories, but also they're exposed to it more. You can buy manga anywhere, any bookstore, convenience store. Um, I've seen them in supermarkets, train stations. They still have uh, newsstand racks. And they also have what are called manga kisa. So a kisa ten is just like a cafe coffee shop. But a manga kisa is they took the idea of the coffee shop where people would go to read and they had shelves of manga. So you go in there, you buy a cup of coffee or whatever, and you just take whatever you want off the shelf and you go read. Very popular activity for young people. And uh, it's very common to you. Um, the trains, they're usually shut down about midnight. So people who missed the last train, they would just go to a manga kisa, get something to drink, wait until the morning. So it's a question to me of how do we move the needle back to acceptability? How do we expand the pie? I mean, I don't mind having a very thin slice of the pie, but I want it to be a giant freaking pie. So if you have any thoughts or comments on what we need to do to get the industry as a whole back in shape, leave comments below or send me a message.